Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be doing a little bit of maintenance on the Benelli TRK502X. Uh, today the plan is to swap out the front and rear sprocket and also put on a new chain. So if you're interested in something like that, hang around. But first, roll them credits. <laughs> Okay, welcome back. So, um, the state of play at the moment is this bike has got a shade under 11,000 miles on the clock. Um, I have noticed that when the chain is becoming a little bit dry, ready for a good clean and oil, it is beginning to make a, a little bit of noise as we're going along on the bike. Um, Inspecting the chain, the chain doesn't look too bad, it's not that rusty or anything, but every now and then there does seem to be a stiff link and I think that's what's making the um, the noise. A little bit of oil on and it frees it up fine. Um, the rear sprocket also is getting a little bit worn now, so I think it's time that um, we get it all changed out. Now, when you put a new chain on a bike or a new sprocket on a bike, you really need to do the whole set because the two don't mix. Putting a new chain on an old sprocket is going to wear the chain out and vice versa. So, you know, it, it's penny wise and pound foolish. You might as well spend the extra bit of cash and take the time, take the chance while you've got everything off just to replace the whole lot. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, just before we start, uh, a little word on the Benelli itself. Um, I've been reading some posts on the internet about people saying that um, their bikes are rusting away and falling to pieces. Um, I can only say that it's got to be down to poor maintenance. Um, as I said, this bike has got nearly 11,000 miles on the clock. It is used year round, um, all through winter on the salt roads. You know, it, it, it's not... Uh, molly coddled or wrapped in cotton wool or anything like that it is used as a proper everyday bike and i also do a lot of touring on it um i'll give you a little walk around so you can see what state this bike is in i don't do anything special with the bike um i give it a good deep clean about four times a year you know autumn winter summer spring all the seasons and when i do that i also give it a good coating of acf 50 now it's just had a, a good dig out i've just give it a good clean a dip clean about a week ago and uh, applied some acf 50 admittedly this bike has kept in a garage it's never left out overnight so i'll give you a few close-up uh, shots of what the bike's like the fasteners is there any rust on the bike so on and so on Okay, so here are some um, close-up shots of the bike. Admittedly, uh, last week I gave the bike a good deep clean. Um, other than that, when I use the bike, all through winter and all through summer, um, if I've been out on salty roads, I'll get back off a ride and I'll just use the standing uh, hose pipe outside my house and just rinse it off with cold water, get all the salt water off. Um, don't dry it or anything, I just put it straight in the garage after doing that and as you can see all the fasteners all seem to be in good condition. As you can see um, there doesn't seem to be any rust on any of the fasteners or anything, uh, it's in really really good condition. And, you know, I haven't gone over and taken rust off the bike when I've cleaned it. Um, these are aftermarket crash bars there was a little bit rust here in this uh, position here I've just put a little bit of um, hammerite crust on that to stop that rusting uh, same again down here there was a little bit of rust and that is about it um, you do see some people who say the front discs rust really bad that is your brake pads not the disc if you put organic brake pads on it will stop them rusting because what happens with the non-organic the dust builds up and it's the brake dust that rusts onto the actual um, disc so that's how that's solved paint weight wise absolutely brilliant not a blemish 
So yeah, um, I think as long as you keep the bike clean, uh, just give it a good clean about, you know, deep clean four times a year. In between that, you know, just a bit of soap and water every now and then. I don't see why you should have any issues with rust with this bike. Okay, so let's have a little look at the parts we've got, what we're going to be replacing. Um, there you can see we have the rear sprocket, front sprocket, which is a 15 tooth upgrade. The standard is a 14. We've got the chain now, um, and we've also got the uh, rubber bushes to go on the cush drive. Now, guys, please be careful. Um, if you're buying these items off eBay or Amazon, there are a lot of people out there who advertise a kit where you can get a chain, a rear sprocket and a front sprocket. And it's advertised as a Benelli TRK502X. When you get them, you will find that they don't fit because they're actually for the Benelli 502. Um, always take a look in the small print and if it says a 114 or a 114 length chain, you know that that kit is for the Benelli TRK502 and not the X version because the X version takes a 116 uh, link chain. So be aware of that. I've had to go out and I've had to buy all these items separately from different locations. Um, yeah, be careful about it. And even when you phone them up and you say you've sent me the wrong kit, they won't have it. They, they swear blind it's for a, an X version and uh, you, you're going to have loads of problems getting your money back in some cases. So be aware of that. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at the tools required. We'll start off with the sockets. Uh, you will need an 8mm socket, either with a small extension or you will need a deep long reach 8mm socket, either will do. Uh, you will need a 14mm socket, 24mm, 27mm and 32mm. You will need ratchets to use the sockets, obviously. Uh, you will need a long extension uh, for your sockets. You will also need a, a breaker bar. Uh, spanners, you need two 13mm spanners and a 15mm spanner, uh, a flat-headed screwdriver. Um, the uh, screwdriver extension for your socket, you don't need it, but it does make your life easier. Allen keys, you will need a 4mm, 5mm and 6mm, and you will also need a hammer um, for various jobs on the task as shown in the video. And you will also need a chain splitter tool and press tool, all in one as shown. The one I use is a Sealy um, tool. I think they're about 35 quid off eBay. Can't go wrong with them. Very good tool, as long as you use them correctly. And you will need an angle grinder or a Dremel with the appropriate bit for grinding um, the pins out of the chain and last but not least you will also need some way of measuring the gap and the width of your chain I like to use the electronic digital caliper very cheap to buy off eBay use it so many times it's unreal those are the tools that are required for the task okay guys so we are ready to start the job so let's get the guard bike inside the garage and uh, start the job um, it may be a little bit dark, hopefully you're going to be able to see inside the garage, but I don't want to do it outside because today is going to be blistering hot and uh, I don't fancy sweating my tits off while I'm doing it. So I apologise if it's a, a little bit dark, but I'm pretty sure there's enough light in there for you to see what's going on. So let's get to it. Okay guys, let's get a few things out in the open first. Um, a disclaimer, I am not a professional mechanic. I have no qualifications in engineering or any of this side of motorbike maintenance type stuff. I'm just uh, a DIY enthusiast. So if anybody's professional mechanics out there and see anything I do wrong, please give me a shout. Let me know if there's an easier way of doing this. So from my uh, meagre past experience, the first advice I would give before you do any job, don't rush in. Stand, look at the bike, look what the job entails and work out how you're going to do it. 
take a look on YouTube. There are a lot of videos on there. See how other people are doing the job that's required. Or get your manual, go through the manual, get it in your head what you're going to do. It's very easy to make rookie mistakes. So, for example, um, if you're going to change sprockets and a chain, it's very easy to go, oh, I'll cut the chain off first. And then when you come to undo your front sprocket, you've got a world of problem because you can't lock the sprocket off to actually undo the nut. So little things like that, always be aware of. Take your time, have a look, go through the job, plan it, go through it again go through it a third time before you actually do the job. So what we need to do is we need to undo these bolts here and take this cover off to give us access to the front sprocket. Um, we then need to lock the back wheel off and undo that nut. Once we've cracked that nut, we're good to go. Um, we have then got to release the back wheel back here, uh, undo the adjusters, undo this, slide the spindle out and take the wheel off. Before we do that, we need to break the chain. There are two ways of breaking a chain. You can either uh, grind down um, the rivets and then use a, a chain splitter to push the actual link out, or you can just get an angle grinder and cut straight through. Today I'm going to be uh, doing the first method because my angle grinder is uh, US and not working. So let's get to it. Okay, so um, it's also worth adding at this point that um, you will also need uh, a centre stand to do this or some way of propping up um, the rear end of the bike securely. So first thing we're going to do now, we're going to take an 8mm socket and we're just going to release, uh, sorry, 8mm socket and we're just going to release the cover here. Okay, so that's the last bolt out and we also have to remove the gear selector so that this can come off. Okay, so to remove the gear selector, we need a 5mm Allen key. And we just loosen this off and slide it out. And then the cover just slides off. And as you can see, we now have access to the front sprocket. So the next job is there is a little metal tab that we have to knock up, tab washer, so that the bolt, so that the nut can actually be released. So we'll do that next and then we'll lock the back wheel off and we'll get that nut off. Okay, so uh, here is the first of the tab washers and what we're going to do is we're just going to lever that upwards. No need to go belly big buns on this, it's just a matter of getting it back so that we get access to the nut. And then, if we spin the wheel around, there's another tab washer here, and we'll do the same with that. Okay, so that is both sides of the tab washer released so that we can now spin and break this nut here. Um, this is the difficult part. These are on extremely tight. Sometimes they come off okay, sometimes they can be a real pain. Different ways of doing it, you can get somebody to stand on the rear brake on the opposite side and lock the, the rear wheel off. Sometimes that's not enough because it's on that tight, it'll just spin and it'll damage the brakes. If that is the case, you then have to go and lock the rear wheel. I will show you how I'm going to do it this time. Okay, so all I've done, I've threaded a bar through the actual back disc and through the spokes and then just lock the wheel and that stops the wheel from turning as it rests on the support for the actual um, brake caliper. Now, it's not ideal. There is a risk that you could damage this or break it, but I'm on my own. I've got nobody else here. Uh, so I'll press the back brake or anything like that. So that's how I am locking it off. 
most probably not the best. You don't want to be very heavy handed on the other side when you're trying to crack the nut. Uh, slow progressive uh, force down on the breaker bar on the other side and it will come off without any damage. Okay, so um, that is the nut broken. It was on quite tight, but it wasn't too bad to be honest. Came off pretty easy. And there we have it. So there is your 32 mil nut. There is your tab washer. Okay, now that we've released that, we can uh, go to the back wheel and we can actually undo the uh, nut on the back wheel. Okay, to release the back wheel axle, you need a 24mm socket on the chain side. And you need a, I think that's a 27, yeah, a 27 on the brake caliper side. And then you will need two drives, obviously, to release the pressure on the back spindle so it can, the wheel can be slid off. Okay, so let's see if we can uh, release this back. We are not. So that wasn't too bad. And you can see that is now nice and loose. Okay, so what we need to do now, we need to break the chain. So what we're going to do, we're going to push the links out using a chain splitter. But before we do, if you see these like little nipples, they are actually the links. And what we need to do is grind the heads off. Because if you try to use your chain splitter to push that through, it's actually got to break that head. And normally, nine times out of ten, it'll break the chain splitter tool before it breaks the link. So just by taking off these two flat heads of the uh, link it will make our life a lot easier i'm going to use a dremel just to do that okay guys so i'm just going to remove the heads off these two ready to these two link pins here remember always wear eye protection when you're doing this okay so here we can see now um we've just taken the top off the uh, front face of that link and we've uh, taken the top of the rivet heads off so now we'll get the chain splitter on and we should be able to just simply push those rivets out those link pins out and break the chain okay so just a little rewind here a little mistake by myself freudian uh, slip should we say I said you needed to um, take off the top of both rabbits. Obviously, you only need to take the top off one. But uh, as you can see, it's nice and flat. So we've got a choice of which rabbit we want to uh, pop out now. Okay, so this is the tool that we're going to use to break the chain. Um, first thing we need to do is just take this cap off here. And then we need to screw out this bottom part here. Don't drop it on the floor. We then take this pin, with the flat head. You can see that it's got the flat head, whereas this one has a domed head. So we start off with the flat head. We pop our spring on over the top like so. And then we pop this into the handle and then we screw this back in. Now as you screw this it forces the pin that way and it will come, you can see, out of the top there. So we want to bring that back just so it's sitting inside and we've got this little recess inside the top of this bolt here. Here we have a handle that screws in, just makes it easier to hold. And here we have a T-bar that slides through so that we can get some pressure on when we want to push the pin out. So now we'll go to the bike and hopefully push the pin out. 
Okay, so here is the tool. Looking inside the tool, you can see here there is a hole. That goes all the way through to the other side. That links on the back side of the chain. And this little rivet head there on the other side as well. And you will feel that locate in that hole. And then when this pin moves forward, like so, it will push the link out and push it out of the back of here. So the first thing we do is position the splitter onto the chain like so. And slowly we move the barrel, this part, against the face of the chain. Only finger tight, that's all. And then once we've got that finger tight, we can then start to push the pin through. Okay, so we can use the bar that came and then just a little bit of pressure at a time. Don't need a lot. Shouldn't be mega tight. And eventually you should feel it pop. And there it goes. I've just heard it pop. And it's just an equal amount of force. I'm beginning to feel the pen at the back coming through the tool, so it's almost out. And there you go, there's the pen out. And all we do is release the tool. there is the chain broken okay so what we do now just feed the chain off like so and we're now ready to remove the back wheel Okay, when I remove the back wheel, I like to remove this rear caliper. It just makes it easier when you're putting the wheel back on. It's easier to put the wheel back on and then slide the caliper onto the disc rather than having to slide the wheel and the disc and line everything up with the caliper and the spindle. Don't have to, but that's the way that I do it. So uh, that is an 8mm Allen key and we just take those out and we'll pop the caliper off and this caliper will just lift upwards and out of the way. What I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to get a cable tie and hold that up so it's not resting on the actual banjo. Okay, so here you can see I've just put a, a cable tie around the caliper so that it's took the stress off the actual brake line and it's, uh, it's not going to cause any damage to the brake line or the banjo. So now we need to get the back wheel off. Okay, next job is to take the rear mudguard off. We have three Allen screws here to take out, four millimetre Allen screw. There you have it, that is the mud guard off. Okay, so next we just need to take off this knot. And we can tap out the axle and remove the rear wheel. Okay, so that is the rear wheel off. That is your spacer, so make sure you don't lose that. There's one on the other side as well. We need to take these 14mm nuts off so that we can remove the old 
via sprocket. It's as simple as that. Not sure whether the stud is actually turning on that. Okay, if you look on the back here, I don't know if you can see. Um, on the back, we have some nuts. So you're going to have to put a spanner on the back of there, so that the whole thing doesn't rotate round. Okay, so we'll get on with that. Okay, so that's all the nuts removed. Um, as you can see, just a 14 mil uh, socket on the front and a 15 mil open uh, ended spanner on the back just to uh, lock it off while you remove this nut. And this should just lift off like so. And then it is a simple matter of putting on the new one. And this is just a standard 44 tooth rear sprocket steel. And we'll just tighten that back up and then we'll torque it up to the correct torque settings. Simple as. Okay, so that's the rear sprocket put on and all torqued up to the correct torque setting. So, what we need to do now is get to the cush drive and replace the bushes. <laughs> okay, so to get to the cush drive, we just pull upwards, just wiggle it about, pull, 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 and eventually it comes off. Now, as I was saying about kits that you buy, I was going to replace all the bushes and the cush drive. However, as you can see, um, here we have this shape of bush. And the bushes I have, as you can see, are round. So we won't be doing that. As it stands, they're in very good condition anyway, and I don't see any reason that they need replacing. So to put this back on, we simply line up these splines with the gaps, like so, and then just wiggle it back down into place. And that's that, ladies and gents. Remember, always to put your spacer back in. Okay, so now for the front sprocket, we will move on to that. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, in my last video I did about replacing, doing the 15 tooth upgrade on the front sprocket, one of the comments I had said I should have compared the two. So here is a brand new 15 tooth and on top is the standard 14 tooth. So as you can see, there's, there's not a great deal of difference. It's slightly bigger, obviously. The 15 tooth one to get the extra tooth in, which makes the gearing difference. But weight wise, I can't really tell any difference. In fact, that one feels a little bit lighter, the 15 tooth one, even though it's bigger. But yeah, um, not a great deal of difference between the two. Okay, to swap them over, it's very, very simple. This just pulls off like so. Um, when I did this in my last video, when I showed how to do the 15 tooth upgrade, unbeknown to me when I took this off, when I took the original off, there was a small washer that fitted on the background. Now, I never noticed that this fell off <laughs> and I never put it back on, but I've done what? 6,000 miles without that washer on with absolutely no issues whatsoever. So, um... I don't know where the washer is now, so we just have to run with it the way it is. But apparently there is one or two small washers that fit on behind the sprocket. So you put your washer on, then your sprocket. I haven't got that washer, so we're just going straight with the sprocket. Okay, so new sprocket on. 
and it fits absolutely lovely but before we go any further i'm just going to take this back off and i'm just going to clean the housing out of all the oil and gunk that's built up before we proceed so let's get that done so now we've cleaned all that crap out pop the sprocket back on and then all we need to do is put the tab washer on which fits onto the splines like so and then we fit the nut the nut has a recess inside so it's clear which way it goes on that side hasn't that size has now I can't find what the actual torque setting should be for this nut um, so when we come to tighten it we will just basically give it as much welly as we can and get it as tight as we can and then get that uh, locking tab down okay we'll come to that in a few moments but now what we need to do is go back to the rear of the bike and put the rear tire back on okay guys my least favorite part of the job getting the axle through the wheel sometimes it works straight away other times it can be a right pain i recently changed the fork seal and that's dropped the forks out of the bike to get the front wheel on was an absolute nightmare. And honestly, guys, that is my worst job to do. I hate putting wheels on and off. One of the things I will say is undo the brake sensor. If I show you on this side. Okay, I don't know if you can see very well. This here. This guy here fits in there like so. Take that out and it'll make your life a lot easier. Okay, the wheel's in situ, so now we'll uh, take the caliper off and put the caliper back onto the disc and then get everything tightened up, get the mud guard back on. And it's just a matter of retracing the steps that we did before. Okay, so there's the caliper back on. And you can see the, the sensor that I was talking about. Just go through that little hole there. And then there's a little 8mm to be done up. Always take that out, guys, before you put the uh, back wheel back on. Makes it so much easier. And also remember to uh, grease the axle up before you put it back through. I didn't show that when I did it. Okay, so let's get all this tightened back up. Okay, so that's the brake caliper back on and tightened up. As you can see, this plate on it's on still loose because we're leaving this wheel nut loose because we need to loosen off the uh, chain adjusters and we need to move those forward and we need to move the wheel forward so that we've got plenty of slack when we put the new chain on and uh, we rivet the link in, which will all become apparent in a few moments. Okay, so uh, all we're going to do now is just move this nut here at the front all the way back and then the nut at the back we can then move forward so that it's moving that way into the fork which means we can push the wheel forward gives us lots of slack on the chain and we will do this both sides Okay, so now you can see chain adjusters both sides fully forward, which means the wheel can now be pushed fully forward, which decreases the length in between here and the front sprocket, which gives us lots of slack on the chain. Just to keep the wheel in place, just tighten the nut up the other side, just by hand. Only thing tight because we're going to have to readjust that back wheel after we've got the chain on. Okay, so the next job is going to be putting the chain on. The chain will come in this like greaseproof wrapping paper. You will have a link P 
paint, which is very important. Do not lose that. And when you get it, the chain will be covered in this horrible slimy grease. So the first thing to do is get a rag and give it a good clean off. Otherwise, it's going to end up all over the back wheel and all over the, the back of the rear rug. So uh, I'm just going to clean that off now. Okay, so uh, next job is to feed the chain onto the sprocket. We're going to start at the back, move it along, carry it onto the chain guard, over the top of the sprocket and then underneath. With this chain, uh, there's writing on both sides of the chain. Um, some chains may differ. So, you know, just make sure if you want the writing showing on your chain, if there's any writing, that you put it on the correct way. Okay. So, watch your fingers when you're doing this. Let me thread it up. And over onto the chain guard and then we bring it round onto the front sprocket and down and we just keep it going Okay, and there you can see we are on. We just need to move the wheel a little bit more forward so that we can link it together. Okay, so at this point you can see the chain has been fed onto the back sprocket and we've got the link, um, two empty link pieces next to each other ready for the link pins to be fitted and uh, fix the chain to the bike. So that's what we'll do next. Okay, so what we need to do now is we now need to use this tool again. Um, instead of being a chain splitter, it's now going to be the riveter. Um, we will use two anvils. Um, so if you can see, if you see there, that has got a recess right across the middle. And that is because this goes on the back of the chain and then the two rivet heads of the link fit in that recess so that there's no pressure on them and we're only squeezing the plate of the chain together. On this side, the other anvil again, this will fit over the pins that stick through, the rivets that stick through the chain link um, so that there's no pressure on them and it's only pressing the plate from the front of the chain. All will make sense um, as soon as we get it on the bike and I show you. So the first thing we do, this part will be at the, uh, let me think, the front of the, yeah, this part will be on the front link and this part will be on the back. So the one with the, the recess that runs all the way across like a bar that fits in the back like so. And then the one with the holes fits on the front like so. And then what will happen is that will be tightened up onto the chain and it will squeeze the two plates together. All will be clear when we put it on. Okay, so here's the important stuff. This is the link pin. That is the back. That will fit at the back of the chain. That will go through. Those two prongs will fit through the chain, holding the two plates together. Then we'll have some little X-rings that will fit on top uh, in between each plate. And then this will go over the top and sandwich the link together. And then we will flare the heads of these pins using the tool I've just shown you to secure it in place. And here we have grease. We're going to have to put lots and lots of grease on this because once this is sealed up, we'll never be able to get to it to put grease in again. So we're uh, plenty of grease on. So let's show you how to go how to do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put some grease 
on the inside of the plate. Make sure we get it all around. Like I said, as soon as we've done this and fitted it, we'll never be able to get in there again to put more grease in. So there we go. Then what we do, we put the X rings on. They fit on like so. And more grease over the top to protect them. sure that the pins themselves are nice and greased and then what we'll do we'll take this over to the chain and uh, we'll thread it through okay so we get our link with the greased up x-rings in and we thread it through and there you can see the two protruding bits next thing we do is more grease he says, <laughs> so we get plenty of grease around there. Ring on. Put the other one on. Plenty of grease on them. And we get the plate, and if you look on the plate, there's some writing on there, so you want it the right way up so it's not upside down. And we pop that plate on there as best we can. Okay, so what we need to do now is to get the riveting tool and place that on. Okay, so we use the anvil with the, uh, the recess going across like a bar. And we pop that onto the top and we feel it fall into place straight away. We tighten these up and line them up. See that it's just over the hole so it allows the pins to come through. Okay, so what we're doing now, we've got the tool on and we're just going to compress and squeeze the plates together. We're not touching the link pins. The link pins are actually in the recess in the anvils, the two holes I showed you. So all we're doing here is pressing, pressing the plates together. And now you can see the plates have been pressed together and the two pins are protruding through. So what we're doing is 
we're uh, trying to get the same thickness, the two plates the same thickness as um, the manufactured plates, so that the measurements should be exactly the same. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to use this tool to measure the thickness of what the links were compressed to from the factory. So the links that were already joined together in the factory. And we're just measuring the plates, we're not measuring the pins, so we put it in between the pins and on the plate and we take the measurement. Then what we're going to do, we're going to measure how much we've compressed our plates on the link pin and we're aiming for them both to be the same. We don't want them too thin, uh, we don't want them too loose. And as you can see, it's pretty much spot on, so um, I'm happy with that. Okay, so what we need to do now is uh, we need to compress these pins here. We're going to use the tool that I um, showed you earlier. Okay, so the, the pin of the tool will fit into the recess of these pins. There's the, the domed part and the back of the anvil with the hollow end fits behind the chain and over the pin at the back. So put the pin into that hole at the back and then we offer it up and we screw the pin forward until the dome part of the pin is sitting inside the hollow of the link pin. You'll feel it click in. Get it hand tight, then put the, the spanner on and then slowly, a little bit at a time, tighten it and push the pin forward into the link pin. This will push the dome part in and it will flare the pin out. We do one at a time, so we do the first one, put it onto the second one, same again, offer it up, finger tight so you can feel that it's in place, and then we begin to tighten it up. And we keep doing this, and we, we keep pushing that pin forward, pressing it in, pressing it in, until the pin of the tool, the flat shoulders are flush against the face of the link pin. So you're pushing the dome part completely in. What we do now is we'll measure the width of the factory fitted um, links. This will give us an idea of um, whether we've compressed it enough. So we want to match the length of our link pins with the pins that were put in by the factory. So we take that measurement and again, remember, we're not measuring the plate, we're actually measuring the pins. And these don't seem too bad. Get an exact measurement. It's a bit fiddly, the, the things keep slipping off. but I think we are pretty much spot on there. So all in all, that is the job completed. Got to tighten uh, the rear nut up. I've got to tighten up um, the front sprocket, put the mud guard on, align the chain, get the right ch chain tension, and that's everything done. Okay, guys, so uh, as well as measuring the thickness of um, the manufacturer's plates to so the plates I put on so that I haven't over tightened them so that they're not too loose. They should match uh, as close as you can. We also measure um, the distance, the width of the pins. So the manufacturer pin, this pin and that pin there. We do the same on this to make sure we've got the same. If you don't have the measuring tool, the other good way of doing it is when you look at this, you see the domed part and then there's like a little flat shoulder that goes around the base of the dome. When the dome fits into the pin that you've actually cinched up, that shoulder should fit flush with the edge of the pin. So the dome is completely inside the pin. And once that shoulder is flush, you know that you flared it to the correct uh, amount. You can't flare it anymore if you, if you put more pressure on once that um, shoulder marries up with the pen. 
or you'll end up doing it as breaking your um, tool. So those are perfect. The shoulder is right up against the actual pin. We flared it and I'm happy with that. Uh, it's about 0.3 of a millimetre wider than the original. So I'm happy with that. You're not going to get it much more closer than that. Okay, so that is the job um, for putting everything back together. That is the job complete. Um, the sprockets are on, the chain's on, the chain's uh, fastened in situ. I have now tightened up the front sprocket and I've bent the tab washer over to hold that in place. Um, all that's left to do now is to put the front cover back on. And then we need to pull the rear wheel back using the adjusters and we need to tension the chain and align the back wheel and then put the mud guard on. And then the job is complete. So as I said, I've already fastened and tightened and torqued up um, the front nut. Well, I haven't torqued it because I don't know what the torque wrench is, but I'll put it on really tight. So we'll just sort the back wheel out and then we'll be done. Okay, so to um, align the wheel and tension the chain, all we do is slide the wheel back and then we undo this bolt here and we slide it backwards. So that's loose, now we can undo the other bolt and we can move this back. And we move this back so that it's flush against the square spacer. Now, if you look at the spacer, the spacer has a line on top and bottom, and there are also markings on the bottom of the swing arm. It's exactly the same on the other side. So what we're trying to do is to mate up whatever reading we have on this side with the line in comparison with the marks on the swing arm. It has to be exactly the same on the other side. Now, some people trust these markings, other people don't. Um, I find on the TRK, it's a little bit out, and what I use is a, a chain monkey laser to actually align the chain. But what we're looking for on the chain is about 30 mil, 28, 25 to 30 mil uh, slack on the chain. So we will be measuring that. But um, a good rule of thumb is whatever adjustments you make on this side, you make exactly the same adjustments on the other side and the wheel should be roughly aligned. Okay, guys, so as you can see, job complete, back wheel on, everything tightened up, wheel is in line, uh, the chain has been tensioned to the correct settings, about 30 mil. All in all, not too bad of a job to do. Um, anybody who's got a little bit of savvy about them shouldn't find it too difficult to do this job. Um, so I hope that that has been of some use to everybody out there. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, please give it the big cheesy thumbs up. And please, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. You don't get bombarded with emails or anything like that. It just helps you find the channel every time you log on to YouTube. So um, all that's left to say is thank you everybody for watching. Everybody rides safe out there. I cried a reviews out.